What's the difference between an atom and a molecule? If you're wondering this, you're definitely not alone because this is such a common question in chemistry. So the short answer is, atoms are like Legos or blocks or bricks, and molecules are like the stuff that we actually build for those blocks or bricks. That's a short answer. Let me give you a longer answer that might be more useful. <laughs> so, let's start by talking a little bit about atoms. There are a few important parts of an atom. An atom has a nucleus, which is made up of protons and neutrons. That's what I've drawn here with these little dots. And then around the nucleus of the atom, that's where electrons live. And electrons live in these circular neighborhoods called energy levels. And so I'm drawing in the electrons here with these black dots. Many atoms have more than one energy level. So they have these rings kind of around the nucleus like this with these electrons. Okay, so here's one atom. Let me draw another atom. Here's a proton. Here's a neutron. This atom's only going to have one proton. And then around the nucleus, here's an electron. Here's, a, here's an energy level where one electron lives. Okay, so two atoms here. So there are all sorts of different types of atoms. And the type of atom that you have depends on the number of protons in the nucleus. This atom over here has eight protons in the nucleus, which, it, which means that it is an atom of oxygen. This one over here only has one proton in the nucleus, which means that it is an atom of hydrogen. As I said, they're all different kinds of atoms, and they're actually about 100 different kinds. And when we talk about them, it's usually easier than sort of like writing out the name every time. We use abbreviations. So when we want to talk about oxygen, we write an O. For hydrogen, there's an H. We have carbon atoms, represented by a C. We have nitrogen atoms, represented by an N. Chlorine with a CL. Fluorine with an F. And so on and so forth. All of these atoms, all these types of atoms, are all a little bit different. I like to think about these like Lego blocks, right? They're all these different types of Lego blocks, but they're all a little bit different. They're different colors. They're different sizes. Some are tall, others are like flat and skinny. And that's like these atoms that all have slightly different characteristics. Now, the, the different characteristics of these Lego blocks come in handy when we actually want to build something with them. And then we're happy that, you know, one is really skinny or one is red or whatever. And so that's where the different qualities of the atoms come into play. We take these bricks and we build like a little house with them. And now we're talking about molecules. So we take these bricks and we snap them together. We can do the same thing with atoms. I can take an oxygen atom and snap it together with two hydrogen atoms. And when I say snap it together, I mean I physically connect it. That's what these little lines here represent. And when I do that, when I have one oxygen connected to two hydrogens, I have a molecule of water. And I call it H2O because there are two hydrogens and one oxygen. Or I can do this. I can take a, uh, a carbon atom and snap three hydrogens to it, attach another carbon with two hydrogens, and then an oxygen, and then a hydrogen, and I have a molecule called ethanol, which is a kind of alcohol that's in beer and wine. So the point is, molecules are made when we take individual atoms and physically combine them together to make stuff. Just the same way, we take individual Lego blocks and snap them together to build houses or whatever you want to make. And I'll even take this one step further. I showed at the beginning that if we could zoom in zillions and zillions of times, this is what an atom would look like. If we took this water molecule and we could zoom in on it millions and millions of times, this is what we'd see. And we'd see the oxygen atom and the two hydrogen atoms, and that they're actually all physically connected together. They're physically connected because they're sharing electrons, forming what's called covalent bond. If you don't already know that, don't worry about it. But they're connected here because they're sharing electrons. And so now they've made like a physical connection between each other. And they've made you know, something that's like one of these, these Lego houses where everything gets snapped together. 
So anyway, that is the difference between atoms and molecules. Atoms are like individual building blocks, and molecules are the stuff that we get when we take these building blocks and combine them, connect them together.